Hey Eurovision fans, it's Tom Cunty from Shanghai back for another Eurovision reaction video. Today I'm going to go through my top 40 of Eurovision 2022 pre-rehearsals and tell you what I think about every entry. So let's kiki. If you want to skip the intro and go straight to the juicy, delicious, meaty part, you can use the timestamps. I'm going to put the numbers in the time bar, so 40 up to 1. But if you're looking for a particular country, I'm going to put in the pinned comment the name of the countries. As always, this is a top 40, so it's going to start off pretty negative and it's going to get more and more positive. But to be honest, it's going to get positive pretty quickly because I actually quite like this here a lot. The main reason I want to do this is that I think it's kind of fun to go through all the entries. Plus, on top of that, I also want to compare what I'm thinking now to one's rehearsals. And when the whole competition is done and do a comparison myself and see which are the, which are the ones that really changed for me and grew and jumped up my table or jumped down my table as well. It also gives me a chance to play more with my delicious fridge magnets, <laughs> which I love. If, actually, if anyone's got any more ideas for videos for me to do during this April period, because I was a little bit more quiet, especially if they involve fridge magnets, that's particularly welcome. I would like to do some reviews of the live performances, but it's a little bit difficult because Israel Calling have blocked anyone using their videos, and Eurovision and Concert, there are no official videos. So I'm looking at a way to do some of those live reviews. But if you've got any ideas for that or for other videos, anything that you want to see, please let me know because I'm totally open to ideas right now. Fridge magnets, ideas take priority absolutely definitely okay let's start off number 40 this may not surprise you it is switzerland Boys do cry. it's so weird for me that where am i going to start this let's go here it is so weird for me that switzerland was my number one last year and the year before two years in a row with john's tears and now it's 40th that's really kind of disappointing for me and this is like easily my most disappointing uh, song for the whole year like I think it's a nice enough song I just find it th there's snoozy and then there's like morgue like death and this for me is just so boring I really don't enjoy it at all I, I can see why other people will and actually this is that's one of the reasons I put it through in my qualification video there's also an element for me that every year there's one song that I don't like that qualifies so I feel like this fills that quota for me that's another reason I put them through I think there's definitely a market for this song personally I just do not enjoy it at all it's just not my type of music I don't like the vibe I do like kind of dreamy slower music you'll see there's a couple of songs came out later which are slow which I have put pretty high but this for me is just it's like anesthetic to me. Let's go to my 39th, and that is Germany. We are, we used to be the rock stars. I never thought I'd know. Germany, Germany. <laughs> I can't go on any more rants because I've already gone on enough rants about Germany. Look, I like my league. I definitely, definitely wish him well. But for me, as someone who usually almost always likes Germany entry, this is quite disappointing for me because Germany's entry is usually something I look quite forward to. Even Sisters was in my top 10, I'm pretty sure. So when I don't get a good song, I feel like I'm short of one of my songs for the year, if that makes sense. Yeah, I just think it sounds a little bit too generic. It sounds very mainstream. I hope that he does well, but I would also be a little bit surprised if this was outside the bottom five. But yeah, absolutely nothing against him. I wish him all the best, but this does next to nothing to, for me. Number 38 is... Slovenia. Damn, I'm really hating on the center of Europe right now. Aust Austria is quaking in their boots. Don't worry, Austria's not coming up for a while. Yeah, S Slovenia, I, I do need to emphasize that there's very few songs that I like. There's almost no songs I hate this year. There's nothing that I really, really, really don't like. This is songs I just don't connect with or feel quite ambivalent. And this is a good example of that. I don't hate this song at all. I think it's fine. I just don't think it's interesting. I think the performance looks very amateurish. This is disco, LPS disco. I wonder is that very high school looking performance actually going to add a lot of charm to it and win people over? But I think it's more likely that it's just going to look very amateurish and a little bit cheap and budget. Yeah, this just, I just don't find the song interesting. I haven't downloaded it yet. I don't, I never will download it. Again, I wish them well. I think it's very sweet that we've got this kind of like young garage band, but it just looks very amateur to me. I still don't 100% get why they won the national final. I'm wondering, is there some magic there that the Slovenian, the Slovenes saw that a demographic in Europe will also see? I have no problem that this qualifies, but it doesn't do anything for me. Next up, 37th place is Denmark. Denmark. 
Yeah, I just don't. I just keep forgetting about this song. I actually did film a video to it. This is, I actually done reactions to all 40 entries, including Denmark, but Denmark's the only one I haven't posted. And I really don't think anyone cares about it because literally not one person has asked for it. And it's still sitting on my phone waiting to be edited. I probably will get around to it eventually. But yeah, I don't feel a rush to get this up because I just feel like a lot of people just don't care about this entry. I do think it's got potential, but I just find that it doesn't stand out. If you ask me to recite all 40 countries from memory and their and who their entrance is and the song, I'm almost certain that this would be my between 38 and 40th. I just would not remember it. It is so unmemorable in a year with lots of memorable entries with a lot of spunk in them. And I think that they can elevate, but their current staging that I saw in Dansk Melody Grand Prix was just so blah that I think that's part of the reason this is forgettable. I can definitely see this rising up though if they elevate the crap out of it. But at this point in time, it's just way too forgettable. Okay, time for number 36. This kind of hurts my heart a little bit because you know how much I love North Macedonia. And how much I'm absolutely not really rooting for them. But this song is just, again, again, it's just too forgettable. I think it's respectable. I think it's well written. I really like her as an artist. She's quite spunky and she's got a grit to her. I would love it if they qualified. I can hear a special hook in the course that makes me want to listen to it again. But I hope that other people do because I want other people to put this through. Despite the fact that I don't really like that much, I always want North Master, North Master to go through. So yeah, I'm rooting for this even though I put it quite low myself. Number 35, and this is one that is slowly climbing. And that is Bulgaria. I think we all are kind of slightly exaggerating in the community how bad this is. It is not that bad. I actually think the song is pretty decent. Every time I listen to it, I do get it stuck in my head. I haven't downloaded it, but whenever I see a clip of it or anything, I do find actually that chorus has got a little bit of something to it. Plus, they've been really great in the pre-parties. Their live performance has, has actually shown that they're very experienced and they know what they're doing and they're not gonna have any of those kind of hiccups that we hear lots of other people having with in-ear problems and technical issues. They aren't gonna have that. I think that everyone's kind of exaggerating how bad this is because we're a little bit disappointed with Bulgaria's previous streak being so excellent with Barslav Milanov and then Victoria. So yeah, it does feel like a step backwards, but really, I don't think the song is that bad. I don't mind listening to it. I'm not gonna skip watching this when it's in the semi-final. I like, I actually will sit through it because I think the song is all right. And I think they're decent performers as well. And I still think this is one of the songs that could be a shock borderline qualifier in 10th spot. Okay, I need to roughly keep 10 to a line if I wanna fit them all in. Okay, it's time for my number 34 and that is Iceland. I think the song is really pretty. Icelandic is a gorgeous, gorgeous language. So I love that Iceland's bring back a song in their own language. Really, really do applaud that. At this point in this time, it feels a little bit too much like a dreamy lullaby. I think that could actually be a strength when the staging comes through. Obviously now all of my rankings are based on not knowing what the actual staging in Eurovision is gonna be. At this point in the time though, it just feels a little bit more forgettable than the rest. I think it leans too heavily into the sleepiness to the point that I'm unconscious. I, I want them to, elevate it and bring it into that dreamy fantasy level with their visuals in the final product. But what I have right now, it does feel a little bit more forgettable than the rest of them. And that's why I put it down so low. To be honest, everything from 36 up, I'm pretty pro. Like I, I'm pretty much rooting for them. I'm, I'm pretty much rooting for everyone. I'm rooting for Malik all, as a person, but also a little bit rooting against because I kind of want Germany to make a change. Like I have no hate against Marius. I hope he does well, but I just don't feel like there's no one I'm really like hating and I wish doesn't do well but yeah these are just the songs that i just don't vibe with now number 33 is multa trust me that's multa it's not poland it's multa i need to get this one reprinted because the little cross you can't see it yeah look this song is cringe and generic as fuck but i have to admit it's kind of catchy and as a performer, I think she's pretty good. And you know that I have a slight weakness for Scandi Pop. So I feel like I am slightly vulnerable to this song. This is a step backwards for Malta, unfortunately. I feel like they were kind of making progress. It seemed like they were starting to get their niche going with those relationships with, with Barslav Minilov and other songwriters. I feel like if the lyrics were a little bit better, I'd probably bump it a little bit more, but really the lyrics are from your like hyper throwaway generic. So I find that a little bit hard to get over. Man, all these negative reviews are <laughs> breaking me down. 
I need to get in. We're getting positive soon. I'm going to get pretty positive from around uh, around 25 or so. Okay, number 32 is Croatia. And then you can see there's a pattern emerging. You can see there's a pattern emerging in my 30s and it's not so much that I hate these songs, it's just a lot of forgettability. I think this song is quite sweet. I remember doing my review to it and actually being quite ple pleasantly surprised and had it in my head for a couple of days, but then I just totally forgot about it. I really just did not think about this. I haven't seen anybody talking about it. It doesn't have any hype whatsoever. And I do think that in the first semi-final with all these other sad girl sleepy songs, it's gonna be one of the victims but I would love for Croatia to surprise me and bring this back into the forefront of my attention. But at this point in time, I just keep on forgetting about it. By the way, we haven't reached a song yet that I've downloaded yet. Number 31 is San Marino. Now, I will readily admit that part of the problem with this song is that I still haven't heard the studio version because when I did my review, it was a live performance. It was also after he'd won, so it seemed a little bit lackluster. So I will readily admit that when I hear a proper version, it might go up a little bit for me, but it does feel like he's keeping a low profile right now. He's not doing any of the pre-parties. I know that instead of going to the pre-parties, he went and sang in a hospital, which is obviously quite nice. Probably people in the hospital need the music more than rabid <laughs> Eurovision fans of which I'm one. I'm not calling other people Ray, but I'm Ray, but as well. But yeah, it just, there, there isn't much hype about this. I can definitely see this being one of my ones that grows up. Obviously now this list is gonna change gigantically when I see live performances and I start to build up a little bit more of a relationship with each of the songs and they start to get more of a personality for me. But right now I just don't really have that, as much, that much information about it. This is, I'm really scared to show this one. This is controversial. This one's, look, I just gotta be honest. My number 30 is Italy. Now, I know some people are gonna be really, really pissed off about this, but I just I just do not connect with this song at all. I download, I, this is a song I put the most effort into trying to like, like I downloaded and I was like, oh, I'm trying, it shouldn't be that much effort to try and like a song. I have skipped this song. This is easily my most skipped song of the year because now I've listened to other times. I'd say I've listened to it in total maybe six or seven times. I just don't, I just can't make it through the whole song. I respect it. I think it's well constructed. I love how much people really, really love this and it really moves them and brings them to tears. That's great. But for me, it's just like duck off a bat, water off a duck's back. I just do not feel anything. I find it a little bit annoying. I do see the hook and that brevity, but it's more kind of like a like a jingle, like an advertising jingle the way it gets stuck in your head. It's not necessarily enjoyably stuck in my head. It's more a little bit annoying. I just don't connect with this at all. I have downloaded this, but I felt like I downloaded it more because I was trying to make that effort to try and like it rather than because I really wanted to hear it again. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing for me that a song that is very potentially could win is so low on my list. I would imagine this is gonna rise up when I see the live performance and I start to warm to it a little bit more. But if I'm really honest about which songs I want to listen to, I have to put this low because I do not want to listen to it right now. So I can't put it above songs I do want to listen to just because it's a favorite. That doesn't really make any sense. So that's why I'm putting it 30th and people are gonna absolutely freak out at me. <laughs> Probably now is a good time to mention that this is just my opinion, and if you cannot handle that, my our opinion, my opinion is difficult. Just chill. People can have different opinions from you. It is not the end of the world. Okay, number twenty nine is Moldova. Hey ho, let's go This is slowly rising up my rankings. I'm pretty sure this has been as low as my bottom three, but it's slowly going up. It's got a lot of personality. It's got a lot of charm. I haven't downloaded it yet. I do find the chorus gets stuck in my head, but a little bit like Brevity, it's not necessarily in that enjoyable way yet. I think this is gonna really come alive when we see the live performance. I think it's one of those songs where the music is almost meant to be seen with live and jumping around and a real party atmosphere. So I feel like listening to the song on its own is only kind of half of the project. I definitely think that this has got a great shot to go through. I think a lot of people tune into Eurovision to see this type of stuff. I'm looking forward to their performance. I definitely think that it can rise to the rankings. I pretty much almost find that the Moldovan entry will move up my rankings once I actually see the rehearsals. Apart from last year, last year was one exception where the music video was amazing and then the live performance actually brought it down. Number 28 is Montenegro. Everybody, everybody, 
This is another one that I kind of want to like more than I do. I think the song's really, really pretty. Vladana's great. I like that Montenegro have taken a year break and they've come back with something that feels really quality and beautiful, a really gorgeous Balkan ballad. I haven't downloaded it yet. I'm not getting that earworm that I have to yet. I really, really wish her well. I really, really hope that this qualifies. This would be one of the things that would give me the most happiness if it did qualify. One thing I should point out as well is that there's songs that I purposefully don't download because I pretty much only listen to your. I'd say 90% of the music I listen to is Eurovision. So I do like to save some of it for later because obviously we have around six, seven months of the year where I'm not getting any new music. So I don't, I purposefully don't download all my songs at the start. I leave some of them for later. These, this is one of the songs that I've left for later. Obviously the ones I love the most, I have to download them. Whereas the ones I don't feel that massive urge, I, I'm able to save for later. This is one of the songs I know is pretty, but I don't have a gigantic urge to immediately download it. So I'm saving it for a rainy day. So I've drawn little lines in because it's just, it's starting to get a little bit busy here. Okay, number 27 is Latvia. <laughs> I absolutely love the energy that these guys are bringing. Their performance is really vivacious, really fun, and colorful. I love the message of the song. I think it's quite funny. I like that there's a song about the environment and nature in Eurovision. We get loads of them in Junior Eurovision, but not very much in Adult Eurovision. My problem with the song is it feels very repetitive. And I don't, I feel like that could have been easily remedied just by getting a producer in and making it sound less repetitive even while keeping the majority of the song the same. See, that's a problem I don't really want to download it because I feel like it would be quite a little bit irritating to listen to, but I'm really looking forward to their performance. I think I'm definitely rooting for Latvia. Their qualification record is super low. One of the lowest in competitions. I really want to see them get through. They've been given a terrible running order number two, but I'm rooting for them. I think this song has got a real lot of positive, fun energy to it. Speaking of fun and positive energy, my number 26 is Israel. <laughs> Now we're getting we're getting into the part now where these are definitely songs that I will be downloading. Yeah, there is nothing from now on that I won't download. I think this song has got a lot of fun, positive energy. The song has got a lot of spunk. I think the flute gave it a little bit more energy. I just don't think the whole package is one of the strongest that Israel's ever sent. We do kind of expect something very, very good from Israel. This is probably one of their weaker years. I still think it's a decent competent entry. But yeah, realistically, this is probably one of the lower places that Israel has been on my rankings for quite a while. I didn't realize that I put these two together, but they've got a lot of similarities. My number 25 is Romania. Very similar notes to Israel. It's a fun, upbeat song. I like the performer. I think it's gonna bring a lot of energy to the competition, but yeah, just don't feel there's anything particularly special about the song. I think it is a very pleasant, nostalgic, summer bop that you probably would hear around the Mediterranean, which I really, really like. I'm gonna enjoy watching at this competition. I'm gonna download this definitely. It's gonna be my later pool. I do feel like this is a slight step down from Roxanne. I thought Roxanne's previous two entries in the last two years were stronger as an overall package, but I still think this is a decent entry. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to qualify from the second semi-final, but I would definitely wouldn't begrudge it if it did. I think it would be a very pleasant surprise. I don't know where this snake is going. <laughs> <laughs> this snake is going. I'm gonna have to find a way to fit this all on the board. Okay, my number 24, you may be a little bit surprised by this, is Austria. I don't think I like this as much as everyone else in the community. I like this more because I like the personality behind it, how kind of daring it is to send this EDM song that nobody was expecting. Personally, I don't like the melody that much. I haven't downloaded this. I probably will eventually, but yeah, I, I don't love it as much as the community does. The community has put this in their top five. It's definitely not there for me. The vocals and the live performance have seemed very, very shaky. I think this is quite a big ask from an 18 year old to kind of come out of obscurity and suddenly perform on quite a big stage. I don't blame her for accepting it though. I think any 18 year old who's offered this opportunity should take it, like why not? It could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I definitely don't begrudge her for that. But I think that it's a very, very difficult ask. It's a difficult song to sing anyway, even for a seasoned performer. I really enjoy this entry for how wild cardy and out there and totally out of left field that it is. But I'm melodically, I don't have a strong urge to listen to this. You might also be a little bit surprised my, my number 23, how high this is. But I am starting to warm to Armenia's song. Ah, 
I have to admit at the start I was very disappointed because my expectations after the one junior vision with Kami Kami, which I thought was brilliant, I was a little bit disappointed. I definitely admire the song more now. I think she's a lovely performer. The song has got a real soft, lovely singer-songwriter quality. It sounds very American to me. It is produced by Seven Americans, written by her, but produced by Seven Americans. One of the Armenians corrected me in one of my last videos. So I do hear that American feel to it, but I think it's lovely. It gets stuck in my head every time I listen to it. I think it's got a real soft, lovely, homely feel, very relaxing and pretty. I think if they can get the staging tone of this right, it could actually do quite well. It's not what I really, really wanted from Armenia, but if I kind of take that bias away and just look at the song on its own, I think it's a very lovely song. I think I've overdone my snake because there were 10 on the bottom row. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna put too much in it. Maybe I need to start spacing them out a little bit more. Okay, let's go to number 22. This is another slightly controversial one, but if I'm really honest with myself, my number 22 is Sweden. I know I have to let go, Which isn't too bad. It's like halfway up my rankings. I think it's more just that contrast between it being number one on a lot of people's rankings and quite low down mine. I think it's a very strong performance. When I did my Melody Festival semi-final reactions, I spoke very positively about this, how I really enjoyed how authentic and organic and Lana Del, Del Rey-esque the performance was. I just don't particularly like the melody as much as anyone else. This for me sounds like a song from the radio from the 90s or noughties, and I'm not saying that in a shady way. I'm not saying it sounds dated. I'm saying more that it sounds like a classic pop hit that was very successful. This sounds like a song that was very successful, but from a period past to me. I can see the appeal of it, I just don't click with the melody the same way that everyone else does, but I'm definitely rooting for her. She seems like an absolutely gorgeous person, really, really lovely, very personable. I like that Sweden are trying something new and that everyone's getting behind them, so I have no hate for this entry whatsoever. Silent Assassin, Belgian. <laughs> I still haven't heard that much about Belgium. I like this song, I think it's interesting. It's got some Justin Timberlake, R&B, pop vibe to it. He mixes it up. I think his performance is gonna be really strong. He won the voice Belgique. I think this is kind of the ones I'm sleeping on. I like to, that thing I said earlier where I like to keep some songs for later. I think this is one of those. I'm really looking forward to his live performance and seeing what they do. I feel like Belgium can, Belgium's staging is a little bit hit and miss, but if they can bring out the big guns, this could be one of the surprises. I think the song has enough interesting elements in it that it's a little bit more interesting than some of the other songs I put lower down on my list. And my number 20, we're into my top 20, so we're halfway through. Lithuania. So this has been a massive growth for me. I probably would have started off with this in my bottom five, but it has risen up. I really love Monica Leo's confidence. She's such a competent performer, a lot like Barbara Pravi last year. Just really bought that, like no nerves, no stutters, nothing, just this real confident competence. I love her styling, I love the quirky elements of her personality that comes in each performance. This is one of the songs I feel like you need to listen to quite loudly to hear all these like small production elements in the background. I, re I think this is a really lovely, interesting, different, loungy, timeless feel. I know it's not timeless, someone corrected me that it's not timeless. It is specifically from a time period. For me, it sounds like a timeless song. I love it, I feel like it's something a little bit historical. For me, it feels something a little bit like I've gone on a time machine back to the 30s or 40s, which I love, and I'm probably wrong on my references, but that's where it personally takes me, so I really enjoy this. Number 19, now, number 19 is Spain. <laughs> Now this is a weird one for me because the song, I don't, I, I don't really want to listen to the song alone. For me, the song needs to come with Chanel's performance. I need to keep remembering because I've seen her performance tonight around a hundred times. That poor girl must be so fucking tired from doing the same dance routine all the time. Honestly, every time she does it, it looks flawless though. So it's kind of worth all the practice because she's going to be perfect on the night. I have to go back to my first reaction was that when I saw this in semi-final number one of Benidorm Fest, I was properly floored. So in terms of the song, I'll probably put it down pretty low, but when you add in how I felt after that first performance, I just have to bump it up because as a whole package, I just think this is really professional and slick and entertaining, and I think she's an absolute star. I really hope this does well. I would have loved a revamp, so it was a little bit more listenable for me outside of having the visual element, 
but as a total package, I really want to put this in my top 20. Okay, number 18, drinking age in Ireland, is it? I don't know. Usually you can do lots of stuff at 18. Number 18 is France. I love how different this is. I'm really, I was really surprised that France chose this. It's so risky, it's so daring and different and ethnic. That Breton language with the Celtic traditional flavor, really, but I love how I feel like France can really send anything. I feel like it is mostly within pop, but they send a different genre each year. I love the performance. It feels like a druidic ritual. They bring great intensity. Anyone who was pissed off about Tanchugeras not going through, I feel like this is their redemption arc because they still have representation through Alvan and Hez. I really hope this does well. Like I said with last year, I was surprised how well people respond to Barbie Pravity. Very pleasantly surprised that people really got behind it because I kind of was getting the impression that France could never do well no matter what they send. I would love to see them do well again this year. I don't love the song as much as some other people do, but I'm massively wishing this well. I would love this to break into the top 10. No French in Eurovision this year. First year for a long time. Another song with a strong cultural feel is my number 18, and that is Portugal. Saudade, saudade. I absolutely love Maro. I think she's gorgeous. She's got a real calm, quiet, beautiful confidence to her. She's a really elegant performer. I love the way, I love her styling. It's really understated, very handsome. This for me is one of the ones I find one of the hardest to predict. I, I made my point already that I I feel that this is very similar to Odor All the Portuguese came out told me I was an absolute idiot. These songs are like polar opposites. They're like the most opposite songs that you could ever have in the world ever, which I think is probably an exaggeration. But yes, apparently it's very, very different and all the European population will be able to discern that they're very, very different songs. I really would like to go through. I think it's really, really gorgeous. I love this really beautiful summery breeze Portuguese feel this very beautiful soft song that's just so hypnotizing and gorgeous I would love this to make it through to the final I am a little bit concerned I don't think that anyone's fully convinced me not to be a little bit worried about this but I really hope this goes through I think it's great cultural representation for Portugal Mara is gorgeous love it okay number 16 is a little bit of rock and that's Finland And this song has been in my top 10. So actually we're getting into some of the songs that have been in my top 10 but have dropped out. This is in my top 10 for quite a while. I think this is slightly suffering from the fact that I heard this quite a long time ago. I have listened to it quite a lot actually. If you went by play count, this would still be in my top 10. I just think it's a really solid, well-written pop rock song. Well-performed, live, not so well-performed, but the studio edit is very, very good. I love when Finland sounds rock. It feels very, it feels very authentic, not forced at all. I think this is, a really solid energy from them. I just think it's probably lacking a little bit of that like extra magic that I feel like every one, every one of my top 10 songs I feel like has like this weird X Factor niche story about them and I just don't feel that Finland has that extra something weird special about it and that's probably why it's not my top 10 anymore. But 16 is very good. UMK was one of my favorite national finals of the season. I am going to do a national final video at some point. My top national finals of the year. One of the, one of the national finals that's definitely not going to be in that list is Ireland. I do love the winner though. I thought Brooke is brilliant. I really love her energy. I think she's a really, really sweet girl. I think this song is really good. I definitely think that it's a good song. My concern is just that Ireland's staging has consistently been below par and that gives me a little bit of worry. Plus, I think it's in the more difficult semi-final. But I think this is a great song. I love how it feels like a little bit like a atypical pop song. It doesn't have a very standard structure. I love the beat behind it. It's got like a kind of, I feel like it's a little bit futuristic. I'm probably totally wrong on that, but that's the vibe it gives me. It feels like very, a little bit, like a tiny bit avant-garde or just a little, got a little bit something different, special about it. I like the play on words as in, I think that Ireland and the UK should be sending songs that have very strong lyrics. I think this lyrically is one of our st stronger songs. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's better than love from above or fire and desire. I absolutely not would love if she went through. I'm definitely behind Ireland this year. This has also been in my top 10, but it was in my top 10 when there were much less entries. Another song that's been in my top 10, but has dropped out is Australia. dropped out is 
I do find myself skipping this a little bit. It's very intense and dramatic. I actually saw someone on Twitter posting that they don't like to listen to the song more, more than once a day. And I kind of agree with them. At the start, actually, I listened to it quite a lot. But now I don't really want to hear it more than once. It does feel a little bit like it takes a like, slight emotional toll. It's very dramatic and a little bit over the top. His vocals are absolutely and utterly sublime. The song, is for me, is very much about his vocal range and his gymnastics that he's able to dance around. I think the song is possibly a little bit on the weaker side. But yeah, for me, this is a big improvement over last year. This is me. For me, this is Australia getting back to strong form. This is actually my favorite of their songs since since 2017. So I'm quite happy with this. That's my number 14. <gasps> oh my God, only 13 left. My number 13 is Greece. I really like how risky this is. It's very dramatic. I love the story behind it. It feels like it's got a lot of heart and angst and drama and melancholy behind it. I'm really looking forward to the performance. I think she's gonna bring something very different, unusual. She's a very, very good performer. A lot of this high ranking is my anticipation about how I think eventually this is gonna end up being a really strong package very unexpected from Greece. I love this fusion of the kind of Greek and Norwegian sensibility turning into something I feel is a little bit unusual. I hope that Greece can get into the top 10 again this year. Damn, it's really getting tough now. Who do I put in? Okay, let's, I'm actually change, making a small change. My number 12 is gonna be Albania. And again, this is a song that has just dipped out of my top top 10 and it's, it's not there's anything wrong with it it's more just other songs are cu currently more in vogue i love this it definitely ticks that ethnic bop box this year i love the revamp that they gave it with that dutch producer who i'm pretty sure ma makes it sound a lot like eva simmons guaya which is one of my favorite songs ever she's a real passionate performer she brings a lot of attitude a lot of spunk she's really into it she's working very hard I love Albania in the competition. I'm really, really behind them. I hope that they they should be able to convert this into a final. Number 11 is... <gasps> I really, really want this to get back into my top 10. It is the UK, and it has been in my top 10 a while. <laughs> my number 10 just pushed it out. <laughs> But yeah, I really love this. This is such a step in the right direction for the UK. I love him as a performer. He's positive. He's so bubbly and sweet and enthusiastic. And that interview on Good Morning when they were talking shite and he just didn't even bother. He just kept it really optimistic. He's doing loads of promotion work. I saw that video of him performing on the streets in Amsterdam live he sings great this is exactly what i want the uk to send it doesn't have to be someone super famous just someone really talented who's got a lot of passion is going to work really hard i think the song is good i can definitely hear that elton john references that a lot of the people in the comments are writing about i really hope this does well i don't think it's the song type of song that should be in the top five i would love it to come top 10. i'm pretty sure there's going to get a good result i hope the british public don't ruin it by going oh it should have been even higher Anything on the left side of the scoreboard is a huge improvement for the UK. I'm really optimistic about their future now. This is such a step in the right direction for them. And they've got some very ambitious staging plans. So I'm very, I'm pretty confident that this is going to jump back into my top 10 when I see that staging. I think he's going to be doing something very daring. This was the only one mentioned by the guy who did the running order, the Dutch guy. He actually pointed out the UK as an example of someone who's come with ambitious staging. So this is one of my most anticipated countries to see the staging. Okay, now to the country that pushed the UK out. <laughs> and they've no relationship, so there's a weird, this is a weird link, but it is Georgia. <laughs> Actually, I suppose there is this quite link because I do feel like this song has a British, has a slight Brit pop feel. This is the only song this year that scratches my indie itch. I'm a massive fan of Beck. He's my favorite musical artist ever. Of all his albums, I'm a massive fan. This feels very much like some of his more recent stuff, Hyperspace or Colors. I love this upbeat, quirky, weird vibe. The song is a little bit re too repetitive for me. I think if they got rid of that repetition, even just with the lyrics, I don't know why the lyrics are so repetitive because that's quite an easy change. It does feel like the song is a tool for the visuals, which I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, I wish it was just a little bit more listenable, but this is one of my most played songs recently and it has been slowly moving up and it just kicked out the UK. I'm hoping that there's a space for the UK and Georgia, but my top 10 is pretty packed this year. Now let's go to a country that is currently moving down my rankings 
and that is Czechia. We have been as high as number four. Fuck, I've set a precedence now where I have to put stars in it. Yeah, this song is dropping for me. I think it's more just the fact that it's been out so long. Now, this is one of our oldest songs. So I'm probably just getting a little bit more tired, which is slightly unfair because definitely newer songs have an advantage in terms of moving up. But by the time we get to the end of version, I think that will have leveled out. Also, the live performance of this has just been a little bit iffy. I am kind of doing these rankings based off the entire package, not just the song, but also how the whole package makes me feel the performer, just generally how much I'm getting behind the country. I definitely am supporting Checky. I would love them to have a good result. But yeah, I think this is just slightly dropping down on my list. But I think this is probably one of the best electropop EDM songs that we've ever had. Okay, let's go to my number eight, and that is Estonia. I actually do have different colored pens, but if I start getting into different colored pens, this video is going to go on forever. Yeah, I love this from Estonia. Really surprised. I was a massive hater of St Stefan before, so I was so pleasantly surprised when his song came out. I didn't think he said I was pretty good this year. So this song for me was an absolute ray of hope. It was my winner by an absolute mile. I love this fusion of this Western country sound with pop. I think the song brings, builds brilliantly into that final course, which is a real great climactic feel. He sings it very well. I think that they're going to go pretty big with the staging. I thought the staging in East Lai was already really good. I love those visuals from the Western. They're leaning into it, but not too heavily. I think if you get stressed up as a cowboy, it'll look too silly, but I think they find a good balance in East Lai. I hope they keep that balance going into the final. I really enjoy the song. It's one of my most played this year in a very surprising way. Like I said, I was not expecting to like a song from Stefan. So that pleasant surprise is definitely one of the reasons that it's moved up. This has been as high as my number four, but that was back when there weren't too many songs released. My number seven is, you might be a little bit surprised by this. My number seven is Azerbaijan. I am definitely ranking this above average because I know a lot of people are just massively underwhelmed by this, but I just have a soft spot for the Azerbaijan songs. I feel my taste is very similar to their delegation. I really love the drama in this. I love his vocal. I love those really luxurious, expensive, Vogue-like visuals. The whole thing is just taking a lot of boxes for me. I absolutely not really understand why other people aren't resonating with this 100%, but for me, this is just definitely tickling my heart in the correct way. I don't know if there's a wrong way to tickle my heart, but maybe there is. <laughs> my number six is, oh, this is tough. Now this is my biggest climber, big, big, big. This song has, I think it's been as low as 25 and it is now my number six, and that is Ukraine. <laughs> This, oh, this is moving up, 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 and up, and up for me. I really, I did my reaction video to it and then I had it in my head the next day and it was a positive in my head. I've spoken earlier about when songs get stuck in my head and it's a little bit annoying. This was not an annoying way. I was like, oh, I need to download this. I downloaded it and I think the, the first day I downloaded it, I listened to it like 10 times. I really, really like this. I did struggle with the rap at the start because I didn't know what he's talking about. Honestly, I should probably just look it up. <laughs> at this point, but it doesn't bother me anymore. I actually enjoy the rap. I love the musicality of it. The only thing I don't like, the only slightly frustrating thing for me is that I can't sing along with the song because I can't speak Ukrainian, but that is the most first world problem in existence. I'm obviously not going to mark it down for that. It's more just when I'm in the shower, <laughs> I want to be able to sing along when I'm with this song and I can't. Other than when you say Mamo, Mamo, Stephanie, I'm just going to have to learn the lyrics in Ukrainian. I'm sure someone can help, help me with the pronunciation or I might just make up my own lyrics. But yeah, I love this fusion of the folk and the rap. I love the last 30 seconds. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love the, it's not a sepulka. It's the other one that begins with L. I'm not even going to try and say it. But yeah, this is really great. I think this is, if this wins, I think it's absolutely not really deserving. It's such a really clever, cleverly written song. And I've actually heard some of the rappers, other music, and this sounds like a very, it's not a compromise, but it's a, adaptation of his style to fit your vision in such a clever way that still feels authentic. It's a really, really, really intelligently written song. Very heartfelt as well. It's about his mother. There's so many things about this that are really, really gorgeous. It just keeps climbing and climbing for me. 
this could break into my top three. I need to see what the staging is. This top 10 is definitely gonna be influenced a lot by staging. Okay, let's get to my number five. And my number five is Cyprus. Now you probably won't be too surprised about this if you saw my rather gushing review, which was absolutely destroyed by Panic Records copywriting. It took me five attempts to upload that video. I really love this summery, breezy, ethnic bop. This takes me to the beach, to the Mediterranean. It makes me feel that summer dancey vibe. I love it, it's so pretty. I love that it's in Greek with a little bit of English, I think. I can't remember. It's produced by Arash, who is a Sweden-Iranian artist who I really loved in the noughties. I listened to a lot of his music. I can definitely hear his influence on in the production. It's got a little bit of that Eastern feel mixed with Greek Cypriot. I think I like this more than people. I am actually conscious of the fact that this may be a surprise and unqualifier. I still really, really enjoy this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It has been as high as my number two, but it's dropped down a little bit because I just don't think it has that like really strong X factor that a song needs to be as high as number two. Sorry, I stopped doing the stars because it was just taking too long. I need to go to lunch. <laughs> so yeah, for some reason, eight, nine, and 10 have stars and the other ones don't. So yeah, that's, that's just life. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Okay, my number four is Poland. Not Poland. Not Malta, Poland. Despite this being one of my most positive reviews of the year and the fact it's my number four, this is one of my most thumbed down videos of the entire season because I criticized some of his falsetto in the performance. Yeah, the falsetto, some of the falsetto bits don't particularly work for me, but overall, I really love this really interesting fusion of opera with EDM. The lyrics are terrible, let's be honest. The lyrics have absolutely no meaning whatsoever. I have no idea what he's singing about. There's like 40 words and he just keeps repeating himself. That I do find a little bit odd because it does have an English songwriter on it. So I don't know why he couldn't just have written a little bit more variation. Plus, it's not because of Ackman. I think Ackman has got a group, spent some time in America, so he definitely can sing English. So that aspect is very confusing. But in terms of melody and the song and how weird and unusual it is, I really, really enjoy this. When I first listened to it, I had it on repeat big time, like obsessively listening to it a lot every day. So that's one of the reasons it's so hard for me. I love seeing Poland doing much, much better, emulating their success in Junior Vision. I really hope this does well. I don't think this has got a shot to win at all because I think the lyrical depth is really missing. And I think some of the operatic parts are a little bit, maybe sound a bit too cheesy or gimmicky, but I really enjoyed. I really hope this does well. My number three, I'm really struggling between who's three and two. <gasps> I kind of want to put them 2.5, 2.5, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say my number two is... This has been my number two for the last month, but I'm going to drop it down to number three, and that is The Netherlands. And this is so elegant and classy and gorgeous, and it gave me chills. And if you give me chills, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to get in my top 10. I thought the music video was gorgeous. I think she's so elegant. I really hope that they have really gorgeous, elegant staging in the final show. Netherlands has been absolutely and utterly killing it for the last, the last few years. Just really jumped up to being one of the real Eurovision juggernauts. I'm, I'm coming into each year now with quite high expectations of what they're going to send because even, even if I don't like it, I feel like it's really classy and thoughtful and elegant. This is really, really pretty. I think people are sleeping on this a little bit. It's currently ninth in the odds. I think this is with Cam After the Storm levels of staging. I think this has the potential to win. I think this is really beautiful well put together entry. So by process of elimination, you've probably worked out who my number two is. It is Constructa Serbia. This is just, I absolutely love so many things about this. I love how different it is. This is so unexpected from Serbia. I never would have guessed in a million years that Serbia would send something like this. Really, I expected more beautiful women showing a lot of legs and a lot of lips. This is so thoughtful and meaningful and arty. I love the I love it musically as well. I really enjoy this musically. It's got a very kind of like steady, pacey electro pop feel, and then that end getting into the chanting and with the Latin and it kind of builds into this like 
more climactic finale. Oh, I think she's brilliant. I have so much admiration for her. This song is so inspiring. I think it's brilliant. I love the meaning behind it. I love how much thought is in it. It's just dripping with personal thought and effort and passion. Oh God, I just absolutely adore this kind of thing. It's, it really is evocative for me. It makes me think about so many things. I wanna meet her, I think she's brilliant. I just, I love this so much. It's so unexpected. And part of the reason I love it so much is because it's from Serbia, who I don't really associate with sending very thoughtful things. So it's that kind of extra surprise that really makes me love this so much. Coming to my number one, no surprises. I've already told you guys a million times. My number one is Norway. There's absolutely and utterly no chance whatsoever that this is gonna change. This is absolutely and utterly I might as well just get a glue gun and stick this there because there's no chance that it's budging. This is by far my number one this year. This song is total and utter pure joy. It is just happiness personified, not personified, songified into a song. I love the energy, I love the spirit. Musically, it's brilliant. That beautiful um, guitar intro and outro. The song is well written, it's well constructed. I love the melody of it. I love the pop drop. The personality of the walls, the backstory coming from the moon. The spirit of this is just happy and fun and makes me feel good. I love dancing to it. I love doing the wolf dance. I still have to, I promise I will learn the dance and post it. This is, an, and you know, for me, currently being on lockdown where mental health is like a big problem, a big issue right now, this song really gives me a pickup. I really, really love it. I would. I don't think it's gonna win because I don't think that they can do well enough for the jury, but I would love if this did really well or won the, the televote for Norway. I have, I just love it. I would, if they needed a kidney to perform, I would give them one of my, well, I wouldn't give them one each, but I would get one of them, one of my kidneys. This is brilliant. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is definitely my number one for the whole year. That's not gonna change. Okay, oh, let me write a number one. Okay, number one definitely deserves some little little shiny lights coming out. So that is my current top 40. It is obviously gonna change massively. I wanna save this video in time so that when I come back and do my top 40 after the show is finished, I can do some comparisons on who went up and who went down. I think it'd be really interesting to see who got elevated. Every year I always have a big surprise. Someone in this section is definitely gonna jump up into my top 10 or into my top 15. I don't know who it is and that's one of the things I love about Eurovision is waiting to see who elevates, who really brings it in the final, who makes me see their song from a different angle and a different dimension and I start to realize things I didn't realize about it before. That's one of the magical things from seeing the visuals. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Please let me know what your top, you don't have to write your top 40 if you don't want, if you want to and you've got loads of time, you can. Or you can just leave me your top 10, your top five, your top three. You know I love, I always love reading all the comments. So please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another version of video very soon. Goodbye.